So let's have another video lecture for this day. So this is the second episode of the present value series and we will be talking about the present value ordinary annuity factor. So our first episode is all about the present value of 1. So please watch it first before you go to this video. The link is on the description below. But if you have already watched it, then let's begin. So, the flow of the discussion in this video is like this. First, we're going to talk about the concept of the present value of one ordinary annuity and as well as we're going to talk about its formula. Second, we will have an application using a simple illustrative problem. And lastly, we're going to talk about the step-by-step -step process of using both the scientific and the basic calculators to get the present value of one ordinary annuity factor. So that's the overview. Now, what is this present value of one ordinary annuity? Yes, it is still a factor or number used to get the current value of your receivable or payable. The same with the present value of one. However, in here, the present value of one ordinary annuity is for debt or receivable, which are settled in multiple uniform payments multiple uniform payments. Let me repeat that. Present value of one ordinary annuity is used to get the present value of your debt or receivable. As long as the debt or receivable are settled in multiple payments and the payments are uniform. So, if it's not yet clear, then let's have an illustration. Okay? Example, you are to pay 300,000 at the end of each three years. So let's highlight each of the next three years, okay? So the question is, what is the current value or present value of your debt today? If the effective or market interest rate is 12% per annum. So if you put it in a timeline, the pattern of payments looks like this. So at the end of each year, you are to pay 300,000 and at the end of year 3, the debt will be fully settled, which is why this is zero here. So now, this question mark is still the amount that we will be trying to find out. And again, even if we don't know this yet, we know that this will increase by 112%. So times 1.12. So the result here at the end of year 1 will still be unknown. Minus the 300,000, still, the amount here will be unknown. But also, even if we don't know it yet, we know that it will grow again. So, times 1.12 again. And you will get something here. Minus 300,000 again. So, there will be a number here again, but we still don't know what it is at the moment. And again, even if we don't know yet, we know that this will grow for the last time, right? So, times 1.12 again. And the product here will still be unknown minus the 300,000 equals zero. So, it's time to compute for this question mark. And to do that, let's work back. So, from here, if this is zero, then let's add this 300,000. Because again, we are working in reverse. Okay? So, this must be 300,000, right? Because logically, this will not be zero if this is not 300,000 right here. Okay? So, let's move on. So, if this is 300,000 divided by 1.12, then we will have 267,857. And if this was the result after deducting the 300,000, then this must be 567,857. Right? So, let's divide it by 1.12 again, and we will get 507,015. So, if that's the case, then this must be 807,015. Now, let's divide this again by 1.12, and this is already for the last time. And we will get the present value of your debt, which is 720,549. And according to this analysis, 
you need to pay 300,000 three times in order to settle it. So, this here, guys, is the timeline technique in getting the present value. And actually, guys, even if you don't know the present value ordinary annuity, you can still get the present value of debt using this timeline technique or you can use the present value of one which was discussed in the past episode. How? Actually, you just need to treat each of these 300,000 as a separate debt. So again, this one is separate from this one and this one also. So let's compute for the first year. So we have 300,000 times 1 plus i raised to the power of negative n. So if we are going to substitute, we will have 300,000 times 1.12 raised to the power of negative 1 for this year, for this 300,000, because the due date for this 300,000 is only one year after, right? So for the second year, for the second 300,000, we're going to use 300,000 still times 1.12, but raised to the power of negative 2 already. And for the last one, for the last year, we have 1.12 raised to the power of negative 3 already. Now, if we calculate this 3, we will have these factors, which are already rounded off to the nearest 5 decimal places. And actually, guys, you can pause this video if you wanted to try getting these factors on your own. But assuming that you have got those factors on your own already, so let's proceed. So this 300,000 times these factors equals this. And if we sum this all up, then you are going to get 720,549, which is the same with this one. Okay? But guys, we still need to learn about the present value of one ordinary annuity. Why? Because this timeline and this technique, which only uses the present value of one factor, will be very inefficient if we're talking about maturity years of 20 years, 15 years, and 40 years, and etc. It will be very time-consuming. And so, let's have the present value ordinary annuity. So, to get the present value based on this illustrative problem, we are still to use the future payments times the present value factor 1 plus i raised to the power of negative n. However, we need to add two elements to make this the present value of one ordinary annuity factor. So, what are those? First, we have the 1 minus here. So, this is placed before this 1 plus i raised to the power of negative n. And then the second one is to divide all of this by the interest. So, if we substitute, we have 300,000 times 1 minus 1.12 raised to the power of negative 3 divided by 0.12. And if you compute this, you should be getting 2.4183 as the factor. So this factor is already rounded off to the nearest five decimal places. So continuing, 300,000 times 2.4183 and we will have 720,549 which is the same with this one and also the same with this one. So in the next episode, I will be teaching you how to use the calculators, both the scientific and the basic calculators, uh, to get this 2.4183 factor in order to keep this video short. So if you learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos.